was never the one to write up a song for just anyone I, I was always the one to find myself lost in old conversations Oh, cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting But then you came along. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel for another video For those of you who are new, welcome, my name is Michelle My husband and I currently have four kids combined We have three boys and then our last baby is a baby girl who joined us just a couple weeks ago. Um, if you guys haven't watched my labor and delivery vlog yet, go and check that one out. I will link it up in the cards and down below as well. I actually just filmed that one right now, so that was the last video to go out. So if you guys wanna see that, after you're done this one, definitely go and check that out. So today's video is something that's a little bit bittersweet. It's something I never expected to have to film. It's something that I never expected to have to go through. And there's a lot worse than what we are going through. This is gonna make me super emotional. Hopefully I can get through this video without crying. Um, it's something that we went through that was definitely hard on our relationship, on our family, on everyone that was involved. It was definitely so, so hard on me. We will get into that in just a little minute. I do want to say that by no means is our story as bad as certain stories and our outcome has become as positive as we could possibly get it right now. So we're definitely so, so thankful. We praise the Lord. We are so thankful for his mercy and for being there. And all of your comments throughout all of this, if you guys have been following, have been just so, so kind and your patience and your love has been so encouraging to me as well. So I do wanna say thank you so much for everyone who stuck by, all of your sweet comments, all of your um, prayers have definitely helped out as well. So our baby girl was born on April 18th, which was a Thursday afternoon, the Thursday right before Good Friday. Everything went well, everything was so, so wonderful. We were blessed to meet her as well. They had encouraged us to go home six hours postpartum, but I wanted to stay the 24 hours just to make sure that she wasn't jaundiced or anything like that because the other boys did have a slight bit of jaundice. And with the Easter weekend and all that, I wanted to make sure that we weren't readmitted to hospital. I was trying to avoid. But anyways, so we stayed until Friday afternoon. But with that being said, on Thursday, once everything was done, I ended up getting um, showered and cleaned up and all of that. And then when I went to use the restroom that evening, probably like 8 or 9 p.m., Ryan, I had just finished nursing her. Ryan was sitting in the rocking chair with her, head up like this, and she was cuddling and she was doing great. Newborn babies sleep all the time. So we did not think that there was a worry. So when I came out of the bathroom, I was like, oh my God, that's the longest bathroom process. If you guys have had babies, you know that the process of your first and second urines are definitely not easy. So I get out of the washroom and I make that comment and look down at her and her face was this like weird shade of gray and blue, which like my heart jumped. I grabbed her out of Ryan's arms, ran down the hall with her, like super crazy. By the time I had saw the nurse, she was pink again. So the nurse was like, oh, okay, you know, maybe there's some fluid, maybe she was placed wrong, maybe her chin was on her chest or whatnot. So they kind of just didn't pursue that. They're like, oh, you know, coloring and babies like first whatever hours. <sighs> I know what I saw. Friday we went home. Thank the Lord I sat in the back seat with her because when we were five minutes away from home, um, she stopped breathing again. So I was like, oh my goodness. So I took her out, patted her. We weren't really sure what was going on. We got home. We do have the outlet monitor. Thank goodness. I think this thing saved my life. I'm going to do a whole review on the outlet if you guys aren't familiar with it, but oh my God, this for sure saved my baby girl's life. Like there's no question. There is no question. So that night went on, everything was fine. The next morning, she was sitting right here in front of the window. Ryan was outside with all the boys. She was in her little rocker and I was folding, putting away some clothes, some laundry, everything from the hospital. And then I looked at her and she was a shade of gray again. Now, I mean, I should have went to hospital right away, but I was like, you know, they told me not to worry, coloring, blah, 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 fourth baby. It's never happened to my kids before. We were going back to the hospital on Sunday morning, which was Easter, um, for her Billy test for jaundice, and I just didn't want to be look, look like one of those crazy fourth time parents showing up, so like everything is fine. Well, that night came around and we put the outlet on her again, and her sats dropped. I don't know if you guys are familiar with sats, but your sats are supposed to be 95 to 100, which is the amount of oxygen, blood oxygen level in your body, um, and hers dropped to like low 70s. So 
When you have the outlet monitor, if it drops below 80, that is the risk sector category and it starts flashing red and your phones are going off and sirens. I woke up out of bed like a bat out of hell. I'm not gonna tell you, like it was crazy. I jumped out of bed crying, freaking out. Ryan jumped out of bed. We patted her and then shh, everything was fine. At this point, I knew it happened twice that night overnight. At this point, I knew there was something that wasn't normal. So when it happened the last time at 3 a.m., I'm just like, I'm going to stay awake because there's no way I can sleep and have something happen. I'm like, we're going to the hospital for testing this morning. I will address it, but I need to stay awake. So I stayed awake. Oh, it was rough. I stayed awake all of that night. When Ryan got up at seven with the boys, he did the whole Easter morning thing because I was like, I couldn't even function at that point. So I stayed in bed for two hours with baby. We had some rest and then we went to the hospital. When I went to the hospital, I packed a bag because I knew I wasn't coming home. Like I knew deep down in my heart that I wasn't coming home. And that was the most painful thing was leaving the boys. I'm gonna get emotional. Um, so we got to the hospital. We were waiting in line to see the nurse to do the billy test with 20 other families. And I saw a nurse that I used to know because I used to work there. And I was like, there's something not normal with my baby and I explained the situation and they brought me right away into the special care nursery. They're like, we are just going to do some testing, see the doctor there. You can hear her, she's on my bed. She's starting to wake up. So anyways, at that point we're in the special care nursery. I was explaining what happened. This was like 11 a.m. But it's hard to explain something like this without them seeing it. They're kind of like, okay, like what else is going on? When is it correlated to? Like, are you nursing? Are you doing this? And I'm like, I don't know. At that point, I hadn't slept in three days. I was so sleep deprived. I had no idea. So I was with Ryan and Easton at that point because I wanted to sit in the back seat with her going and I did not. Um, so Ryan came with me. This is Easter, so there's so much stuff going on my mom took the older boys to our easter dinner because they, they still wanted to go and i didn't want them to feel like they couldn't go so they went so we were at the um we we're at the hospital where i delivered and they were doing all these tests they had all the sats monitors on her and all that and at like 1 20 p.m she was sitting on my lap i had just nursed her i was changing her sides and she went completely limp like no sign of life at all her coloring changed completely and i was watching her do it and the nurse was like right over there so i was like i'm just gonna let it happen because i know that the nurse will be able to help i'm like if i don't let it happen like if i start like tapping her right away um i knew that like at that point the nurse wouldn't see it so she might not understand so i just let her go there was doctors nurses i knew that i was in the right place and uh, when the, like I called a nurse over and she was completely limp, arms, legs, no sign of movement. Her chest wasn't going up and down. She was rapidly changing colors, like her whole face, not just arms and legs. And it was really tough. At that point, they called our children's hospitals and ICU. They spoke to a team of eight doctors, specialists, and that is when they decided they were gonna admit her to the NICU. I felt like my whole life had been torn apart from me. I. I don't even know. They said at 8 p.m. we're gonna come and get her. Please do all of these tests. So they did urine samples, blood work, spinal tap. They did so many things. This is my three day old, not even a little girl. And I was like, whoo, so hard to watch. It was probably the hardest day of my, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Probably the hardest day of my entire life. It was, the most pain I had ever felt. So at that point, Ryan went home with Easton and then brought me back more stuff that I would need and um, went on the rest of the day with her. They did a bunch of tests. I held her, I rocked her, I held her hand. They put an IV in her arm, which, you know, watching all of this back, it's super difficult. I need a tissue, super difficult, but yeah, so, the hardest part was when the transport team came to get her. They put her in this like isolate thing that was gonna travel with her and I did not go in the ambulance with her at that point. I had my car, I couldn't. It was only a 10 minute drive. If it was any longer, I would have went. When she was wheeled off and they were so, so great and so compassionate and so supportive. No one should have to go through seeing your newborn little baby get 
taken off and gone with somebody else and gone to a children's hospital. It is the most heart-wrenching thing in the entire world and like I said I know that people live through a lot worse and that is difficult and I'm praying for everyone who has to go through something like that or worse. This is just my story and I wanted to share it with you guys because no matter how little it is or how little it seems to be for certain people until you live it you do not understand the feeling. So especially that I had taken her home when I saw her get taken off I was it was really, really difficult. All right, so at that point, she gets taken off. I go to grab my car. I lost my parking ticket. I was a freaking mess. I had her empty car seat, all of our bags, and it was rough. And by this time, it was like 9 p.m. I was exhausted. I am like complete waterworks, can't even handle myself. Drive to the hospital. They had given me where to go to go to the NICU, so I walked in there. They already had her on this little bed, and they were poking and prodding at her. And it was so tough. Anyways, that night she had three more spells where she would just go limp and discolor and her sats would drop. So they did a head ultrasound that night, which was the Sunday night on Easter. Head ultrasound and then they also did more blood work and things like that. Plugged her into a bunch of machines. I just sat there and held her hand all night, all day the next day. The next day was Easter Monday, so they didn't do a whole lot of stuff. They did end up doing a bunch of tests over the course of um I think her last actual test was Wednesday so Monday Tuesday Wednesday they did probably like a dozen tests I will name them for you right now I will post some pictures as well if I can of her doing these tests just in case you guys have a little baby you want to know what an MRI looks like in a little baby what uh ECG looks like what an EEG looks like EKG all of those I will post everything that I have for footage like I said, I was spending time with her, trying to get as much sleep as I could, trying to understand her condition. So picking up the camera was not my number one priority. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, it was gone. Like it wasn't even in the back of my mind. I wish I would've taken a bit of footage for you guys, just so that you guys could understand a little bit if you guys are going through something like that, but I just couldn't do it. So anyways, so I don't know in order exactly when she got all these tests done, but I will name them out for you guys. So she did the head ultrasound. I'll name, I'll start by the head and go down. Not in order, like I said. So she had the head ultrasound, which came out normal. She had an EEG, which is a, a scan of the brain to see, to rule out seizures and um, brain function that wasn't functioning. So they had that as well. They also did a brain Z, which is similar to the EEG, but it says other things which was a very, very terrifying test because they put four prongs in the baby's scalp, like underneath their skin, and they have to lay like that all night long, and I couldn't hold her, and I couldn't nurse her, and that was so traumatic to me. I know people can't hold their babies for a long time when they're in the NICU, when they're born, when they have issues. It was traumatic for me to not be able to hold her and rock her and nurse her and hush her when she was crying. It was just so hard to see. So she had the brain Z as well. So yeah, so EEG, ultrasound, brain Z, ruled out seizures, ruled out any kind of malformation, which I was so, so happy for. But at the same time, you're so happy and blessed that they're not finding anything wrong, but you can't find any closure because you don't know what is wrong. There could still be a ton of things and you have no idea. So after that, they did an MRI, which was she actually did so so well but I was a little bit traumatized number one I was so stressed out so worried about results for the MRI because that is a huge test and when there's something wrong in an MRI typically they're not great results and they're life-altering results so I was really worried about that they put her in this little straight jacket and it was like 40 minutes long my mom came we had breakfast I could not eat um, but I was just so traumatized um, for it. But she did so incredibly well. The nurse was there with her. She was great. She was like, she handled it so, so well, which was so great. And then we got the results for that on the Wednesday night. So this was done on Tuesday and the results came back negative. Everything was fine. I cried. I did not even know what to say. I was just so, so emotional when they gave me the news. I was just so happy, so blessed. Um, so nothing was wrong with her brain, her spinal cord, all of that. 
Uh, so then they did an upper GI test because they were worried that she was aspirating all of her milk or that she didn't have her esophagus wasn't um, going to her tummy or was going uh, to her lungs or the flap between, there's a flap anyways, between your esophagus and your stomach and it's supposed to go like this, breathing and eating. And they were worried that that either was unexistent or that the flap was really loose. They had no idea. That came out all okay. Everything anatomically was fine. They did a uh, chest x-ray. Her lungs were a little wet from being pushed out so, so quickly in labor. She didn't have the time to have that squeezed out of her. They said that she could just cough that up and then things would come out. So I think that's all she had for test. Uh, they had put an IV in at first, which they took out on the Tuesday because they were trying to give her antibiotics to rule out any kind of infection. She did not have infection, but they did want to make sure that they were starting a course of antibiotics in case she did. They were worried that I was GBS and didn't know. They were worried that I had an infection and didn't know. There was fifth disease going on at my son's school. They were worried about that. They were worried about meningitis. They were worried about so many things. Her spinal fluid was fine. Everything was fine. It was just, oh my goodness gracious. So we were sitting in this one little NICU room. I was sleeping on a chair for days. I sat in this box with her for days. I did not leave. I could barely leave to shower. I would barely leave to eat. I would grab a quick coffee in the morning and maybe some dinner at night, leave for five minutes, eat in the room, quickly go out to pee. I think I showered twice. I know it's gross in 10 days. I think I showered twice. I did cleanse other ways, but I did not want to leave. I just wanted to be with her. So as difficult as all of that was, my healing process postpartum was really difficult as well because when you're not taking care of your body postpartum, you're sitting on a wooden chair after you have tears and hemorrhoids and everything like that. It's definitely not super good on your body. So after I came home, I definitely took a step back. Pain started coming back. Fatigue definitely started hitting me, cleaning my house, taking care of all the kids was definitely really rough. All right, so as you can see by the whole outfit change, it is the next day right now. As I was filming that last clip, little baby girl who was laying right there and Easton both woke up at the exact same time, freaking out and crying. And that was like 10 minutes before my other boys got home from school. So the house quickly became super loud and rowdy and I could not finish this. So I'm going to finish it for you guys right now. Um, so where was I? I was saying, yeah, so they did all of those tests and they could not find any answers, which, um, I mean, like I said, it was super comforting, but at the same time, it was just, um, I couldn't get any closure and couldn't really understand what was going on. So her last test was on the Wednesday and that was also the last day that she had one of those episodes. So then they needed to wait seven days with her in the NICU with no spells or episodes which are like apnea episodes where she would stop breathing and not be able to start breathing again on her own. Periodic breathing is super common in newborns and preterm babies, um, but typically they should start breathing again on their own within 20 seconds, and if they don't do that, then it's called apnea. So they did not call hers apnea, they called them hypoxic spells. So Google that if you guys are interested in knowing what it is, they're just saying she was having hypoxic spells and they had no idea why. So again, her last test, which was the um, EEG, was on the Wednesday night. And then we had to stay a full seven days after, so I did stay with her. We did lots of cuddling, lots of like holding and rocking and nursing, and really establishing like a super good beginning of a relationship. As difficult as it was to be in the NICU, um, we did get a lot of quality time together, which we probably wouldn't have had as much at home having three other boys at home who do require um, attention, especially my toddler. So we really did focus on building that relationship between the two of us. And I just had a lot of anxiety with everything and not a lot of sleep. Um, I did feel really bad. Now I know that she doesn't care where she is or what she's doing as long as she's held, taken care of, fed. She's close to her mummy. She doesn't really care what's going on. For me, it was just really sad to not be home with her. Um, as a newborn, the first few days, I couldn't dress her up in outfits. And I know that sounds super pathetic. And I know it sounds pathetic that I was worried that I couldn't dress her in cute clothes, but expecting a child um, you look forward to all of that stuff as well and you don't expect your baby to be sick um, and spend time in the NICU. So 
it was really weird for me. There was an actual, there was actually a little 32 week preterm baby or 31 week baby next to us. And he was um, born on the same day as her. And um, the mom didn't expect to be able to hold him or put clothes on him for a lot, lot, lot longer than what she actually did. And the day that the nurse was like, oh, should we dress him up in an outfit? The mom just broke down and crying. Like it was so emotional for her. That was her first child as well. So, I mean, you feel that emotion in all of your postpartum feelings. So I just tried to make it as, um, as normal as possible, similar things than what we would do at home. There's actually a really wonderful family who donated six Mamaroos to our NICU. So they actually gave me a swing for that last week. She was able to sit in the Mamaroo. I actually held her a ton, nursed her, rocked her. I used my little carrier as well, like my little ring sling, and I was able to kind of walk around the unit a little bit with her when she was unplugged, once I took out like IVs and all of that. And at that point, I think five days before we left, during the daytime since I was there, she didn't have to be hooked on to any like sat monitors or anything like that. So that was super good. It was actually like normal. It was just like an observation period, a wait period. The doctors still did their rounds. The nurses were still there. At that point, I no longer had to weigh her diapers because we were weighing the diapers um, to see how much input output she was getting. At that point, we just had to do a diaper count. I didn't have to weigh them anymore, which was nice as well. She was able to wear slippers. They just recommended snap slippers so that they could put the sat monitor on her foot at night. If there was any other monitors they needed to put on, then that was easier to kind of just thread them through the buttons, opposed to um, having a zipper and then they would have it all kind of up in their face, which is probably not safe. So that is basically it. And then when we got to leave, they did say we we're gonna have a follow-up. So I think our sleep study is next week, next Monday night. So her and I go to the hospital, we go into this like clinic and we spend the night there. And I'm assuming they're gonna put a ton of probes on her again and figure out what the issue is. We are going home with a little bit of oxygen just while she's sleeping. Right now she doesn't have the oxygen on because I'm sitting here and I'm watching her and she does have her outlet on so I can watch her sats as well. Um, but typically if she's gonna be sleeping for a longer period of time, uh, we actually just came in from outside so she's still all bundled up. Um, yeah, so if she's gonna be sleeping for a longer period of time or overnight then we have the oxygen. I have the, let me show you. Her little oxygen tank is right there, as you can see, right by my bed. And we also have some portable ones as well. So when we're taking a walk or in the car, we can bring that with us. She is on one eighth of a liter, which is not a huge amount of oxygen. It's just to kind of help stimulate her. So she will be on that until further notice. After the sleep study, I think two weeks after that, we meet with a respirologist and we'll kind of go from there, see if there's any improvement, if there's not what other game plan there is. I am just crossing my fingers that we can stay out of the hospital and that this is something we can do at home. I was totally okay with coming home on, with her on oxygen. I was like, I just wanna take her home at this point. So if we can do treatment from home, if it's just a waiting period and we can do that from home, let's just get things going so that we can go home because I just wanted a little bit more normalcy in my life and I miss my other babies so much and they missed me and I just wanted our family to be reunited and back together. So an oxygen, um, she has like a little cannula in her nose and that is not even like a huge deal. Super easy to take off, put on, plug it in, you turn a knob and the oxygen's on and the oxygen company actually comes and delivers to the house weekly. So we're always getting fresh tanks so that we don't run out as well. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so as for now, she has no proper diagnosis. They did send out her blood work to uh, rare genetics to see if she had a rare condition. They said it could be um, congenital centralized hypoventilation syndrome, which only a thousand people have worldwide. So crossing my fingers, that is not that because that's a pretty bad diagnosis. And then I'll um, leave a link down below if you guys are interested in finding out what CCHS is. Uh, but we are hoping it's not that, but they did not rule it out. They just said currently her actual diagnosis are just hypoxic spells um, because she stops breathing or she has like periodic breathing. But now that she is not stopping breathing anymore, knock on wood, 
I don't know what her new diagnosis will be. So we will find out more at the sleep study. I'll probably um, do a little bit of vlogging um, just to kind of show you guys what the setup is, what it's like, and then I'll also give you an update on when I have any news about that. Maybe I'll have news in a few weeks for you guys, but as of now, I do not know. You can see her moving now. She's waking up. So anyways, guys, that is all I have to share with you guys. So it was a really, really tough journey to follow. It was a pretty hard start to her life, but we are making the best out of all of the situation. We're just trying our best to love her, hold her, nurture her, and do everything that we can to be really good for her. Um, so as she's waking up, I'm just about to get ready to feed her. So I will let you guys go, but thank you so, so much for all of your love and support once again, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.